Hey guys, welcome back to my random vlog or rare vlog. Anyway, I'm here early not because there's an event at Resorts World but because there's this Pokemon Go Safari Zone Sentosa. So this is the event map. The cheapest way to get in is to walk to Sentosa via the boardwalk. This is what I'm doing now. And you can take the monorail to beach station if you want to check in at the beach station. It's not even 10 a.m. and it's very hot already, so I suggest that you bring lots of water, an umbrella, a hat, a portable fan, portable mist fans. So this is the first check-in area according to the Professor Rilo. So you can either check in here or make your way to Palawan Beach. The Pokemon Go Auntie Uncle reunion of the year. That's the orange color. Oh, I'm actually orange. It's the other side. So the check-in zone looks like this orange. Pokestop stop thing and it appeared somewhere closer to the Resorts World central area. I don't know why everyone's walking to the crane dance. That's going further away from the monorail station. <sighs> Even more people here. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'll hang a little light. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. It's very hot here. Okay, so we just finished scanning and probably should have done it in the shade. Why did we do it? <laughs> there. Come to the bull ring area of Resorts World. Basically, this is a place where you can definitely see the Universal Globe. This is the entrance of Universal Studios Singapore. It's a big area and this is the place where you will check in. It is not at the Boardwalk Bridge, even though they had the Professor below Stanley there. I think one strategy you could do is to check in at the Bullring area of Resorts World so that you can scan your QR code first and activate the special Pokemon encounters. Then after that, you can take the monorail here from the Resorts World station. It's free if you take from here, so might as well, right? You can walk there if you want also, but uh, I think it's a bit too hot nowadays to do it. So apparently, you, although you can check in at Resorts World, the Pokemon are spawning only at the beach area, so no choice, you gotta go to the hot and sunny Beach station It's been a while since I've been here So after you walk down the stairs, head left because according to this map, it's at Palawan. It's only 10.20 and I think this is just going to become a lot worse as the time goes. So this is a shop in a container box. Okay, now this is interesting. Pikachu wearing the Pokemon shirts. Oh my god! Something happened there, I don't know what. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, so that's the Pokemon shirts booth. 
they aren't selling any of them. Anyway, they gave me this free sticker. <laughs> Quite cute. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so go there for your free sticker. This is where you meet. Are these the gym leaders? Or I don't know what they're the faction leaders. I can't remember anymore. The three team leaders or gym leaders and Professor Willow. So these are the three player lounges. They are just tents. So these player lounges come with uh, lighting, ventilation, and power supply, and seating. And a lot of sand, there's sand in my shoes now. Also over here at Palawan Beach, the La Pras float. And in the distance, I see the other three player lounges, which are basically just a giant white tent with power sockets and fans and seats. Pikachu meet and greet is happening every day during this Safari Zone event. So it's at both the Palawan Beach and Tanjong Beach area. There's a meet and greet tent. There are three meet and greet daily. The timings are here. I don't know. It's just the background. It looks quite sad actually. Yeah, it's probably very sad. Funny thing is everyone's here <laughs> complaining about the heels when you see. I'm gonna chow da very soon. Ah, <sighs> shitty area. Shitty area. I think they should hold this event next time at like Gardens by the Bay or Marina Bay Sands or like Jewel Changi Airport where there's like a Pokemon store there already and it's fully air-conditioned there's also a lot of food to eat there there's a lot of shops to go there while you wait for your family to play their Pokemon Go Safari Zone and other people can enjoy the shops there there's also Beauty in the Pot there there is uh, an A&W there oh my gosh a lot of people walking in this direction something is happening it's hard to imagine that this Pokemon game has evolved into such a strange phenomenon. Like when I was young, I played Pokemon Blue and then Yellow. And I couldn't even get a Game Boy, so I had to play the emulator version. And after a while, I got a Game Boy, I had to buy the knockoff cartridge, which doesn't, which doesn't work all the time. And then 20, 30 years later, all the adults are playing it. Or more like the older adults are playing it. At this Palawan Beach area, there are a few food stands, but they are still being set up as of 11 a.m. There is one 7 Eleven here, and I think that's probably the only 7 Eleven that's near here because everyone else, everything else here is closed. It's like, what a waste. Just one of the refreshment stops. This part of the beach is actually much more comfortable because there's no sand and there's shade from the trees. It's a lot windier here also. Shuckles. This is called Shuckles. Hot spill turtles. Really? So I think no matter what your strategy is, you most likely end up walking to Tanjong Beach. Anyway, since you need to walk to catch the spawning Pokemon that's spawning at different places, right? So these are the other team lounges. It's a large expanse of nothingness. Apparently there's free Wi-Fi here. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, 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 okay
So the unknown Pokemon that will be released here will spell out Sentosa. Based on the players here, you need to walk most of the Palawan beach to capture the various letters. So my mom is done with this side of the safari zone. So I'll make our way back to Resorts World side of things. So it's barely two hours and I think it's it's not super crowded and you can walk in most areas but I think the half beneath the trees along the beach would be a bit crowded. It's gonna be really easy to get lost here since it's quite crowded at some spots so I would suggest starting a group chat if you're here with your friends and share your location in like WhatsApp or I don't know find my friends for iOS so that you gotta keep an eye on where everyone is because it's kind of easy to be too engrossed with the game and you realize that you're the only one left on one side of this island and everyone else went for lunch or something <laughs> or maybe they already left and went home <laughs> so yeah keep the your location shared with your friends and family so no one gets lost this is the pot of lost wonder a team park for children a water playground basically and I think it's closed permanently They follow an alphabetic line So I'm now back at Resorts World Sentosa there's a lot less people here. I mean, the crowd at the Globe, that's the usual crowd. No crazy swarm of Pokemon trainers here. Okay. Okay, it's a bit standard. There's only standard Pokemon appearing here. I think that's all for this vlog. My tip would be to make sure that you are well equipped for the harsh weather. Then um, you can check in either here, the Bull Ring area of Resorts World Sentosa or at Palawan Beach. The Palawan Beach is recommended because for some reason today that there aren't many of the Pokemon spawning around here. I guess this is just not the main venue for the Safari Zone. You can check in here but yeah, I don't know what's the point then. Most of the stuff are happening at the Palawan Beach to Tanjong Beach that stretch. So you need to take the monorail to the beach station or some other way to get in there. You can drive there as well and then you just check in there. I guess here it's just convenient but you won't be able to catch much here. But you probably should take a rest here because there's a lot less people here.